Gather up all your junk for Recycled Houses on The Amazing Art Show. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Beam, and today we've got a really cool recycling project for you today. So you're going to need some really strange and unusual objects, so I'm going to kind of go through the list and um, explain to you kind of some things that you're going to need. Um, the strangest, probably most odd thing, but I bet you have it around the house, is like a 2x4. So if you look right here, it is just a 2x4 that, you know, just a little scrap of it. And then if you can get mom or dad to kind of cut down the edges so that it gives you some kind of an angle at the top, if not, you can do it with it just flat too. All right? So that's one of the things that you're going to need that's a little unusual. You are going to also need a hammer. You'll need markers. You'll need some kind of a good kind of a tacky glue that will adhere really quick. Um, permanent markers. You'll need acrylic paints. Um, the other thing that you can also use, and I'll give you some things that if you don't have this, but this is, you could get this from your teacher at school. This is laminating film, and it's just some little scraps of it. So we're going to be using this as well. So I've got a few little pieces here, and it doesn't take a lot. So you can ask your teacher about that. She will love to give you some of that. Um, paint brushes, obviously scissors. You will need a little piece of foam that you can cut into like a little square shape. And then you'll need something that you can glue it onto to where you can make this into like a little stamp. All right. So you could put it on, you know, the end of a, if mom sews, if you've got like a thread or a spool of, of thread, then you can put it on there and you can stamp with it like that. There's tons of stuff like old, um, your film used to come in it for your camera. I mean, all kinds of things. A lid, like um, you could get like, you know, a Coke lid can become something that you can stamp with. So something like that. And um, maybe like some little nails or brads, any kind of little metal things that you might want to use. Um, you know, just some little trinket kind of things like that. And I think, oh wait, this is the main thing. All right, this is like a little sheet of copper metal. And if you have this, fabulous. They also make it in like a heavy, heavy duty aluminum foil, and that would work as well. Um, you could also just do regular aluminum foil, and I'll kind of talk a little bit about that too. So uh, the aluminum foil is the stuff that mom has in the pantry that she cooks with the, in the oven and helps keep things clean and not to stick and all that kind of stuff. So if you don't have something like this, you can always use, you know, a substitute. All right. So I think that's just about it. So I think we're ready to get started. All right. So we're going to start with our 2 by 4 And... The first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need to do just a really good little base coat on everything. And a couple things kind of inspired our project today. The first one being, we've talked about them before, and those are Victorian houses, and they're painted ladies. That's what they called them. They had like a nickname, the painted ladies. And so when I was thinking of our project, I wanted to do something that was very, you know, long, like these little houses that were very long and tall. And so... That's kind of where my idea first went. But then I thought, well, I don't really want them to be normal plain colors. But that kind of made me start thinking about the painted ladies. So, but really, after we get them finished, and I'll show you here in a little bit when we start working on them, they look a little more like kind of like row houses or even like apartments in a way because they're just this really long, tall, you know, skinny kind of a little house. So really fun and whimsical, so kind of keep that in mind. So whatever color you would like to start with is kind of like your base color, and we're just going to do the whole thing that color. So I think I'm going to actually do, I'm going to do a light blue, but I'm going to even make it just a tad bit lighter because I'm going to mix just a little bit of cream with it. And it doesn't take a whole lot. And you're just going to paint everything, basically. So I'm going to mix that together. Don't be afraid to mix your colors. You want to kind of think it out. You don't want to end up with some gross color, but don't be afraid to mix your colors. So basically, you're just going to do a light coat 
on here. Now I will tell you, I did sand this just a tad bit and you can do it without sanding it. I've done it both ways. I just like how it kind of looks, the paint sticks a tad bit better whenever you have, um, you've, you know, sanded it just a tad bit. It just kind of takes the rough spots off. And like I said, this paint job, it does not have to be like Michelangelo perfection. You're just kind of getting some color on there and you want to kind of cover the wood and you're going to come to spots in the wood because this wood isn't like a super, you know, really fine kind of wood. So you're going to come where there'll be like really super rough spots or there might be like some little gouges. So sometimes you have to take your brush and kind of pounce it in there to get some coverage in that area. So I've got that side done. It's not perfect. You can even kind of see through it a little bit, but in the end that ends up actually looking really, really nice. So we're just going to, you do not have to put um, any paint up on the roof because we're going to actually cover that. This edge right here is really rough. So you can kind of see what I mean when I'm painting this. It's real rough. So you have to kind of get your brush in there. Probably not one of these projects that you want to, you know, use your best, best brushes on because it kind of messes up your brushes a little bit. But you're just going to paint everything. Once or as you're kind of painting, you can kind of be thinking about what kind of a house you would like to do. And so we had talked about, um, in my class, we had talked about Victorian houses before. We also talked about like what our houses look like and what kind of details we have on our houses and, you know, some examples of things that we have, windows, doors, you know, all those necessary things that we need in a house. We need to be able to get out, so we've got to have some doors. And we did not, I didn't see any kids that added like garage doors onto their houses, which since we're making these and we want them to be really nice and kind of decorative, probably don't need to do a garage door, even though we all have those. All right, so I'm gonna stop here, even though I've not done the back. I want you to do the back of yours but I'm just gonna stop and I'm gonna go back in any places where I see any little holes, I'm gonna kinda get that. And then I'm ready to move on to the next thing. All right, so this paint, good news is, is it dries really, really quick, so that's great. The next thing that you're gonna need is um, you're gonna need a pencil and you're gonna kinda sketch out your ideas of where you want things. So, um, I'm going to use a marker so that you guys can see it, and a ruler is not a bad idea either. So um, I'm actually going to kind of wipe this off just a tad bit. I'm pretty dry, so that's good. All right. Okay, so now once I have got everything painted, I'm ready to kind of start thinking about how I want to lay things out. And there's a couple things that you can do to kind of help yourself. You can use a ruler which works great. You can also just, sometimes I know that it's hard for my kids. They're like, well, I don't know how big I want to make the door. I don't know how big I want the windows to be, you know, and it's kind of hard to visualize it. So in the mail, mom and dad get these all the time. They're like, they really want you to get a credit card and they kind of put like a little fake one on there. So it's not really a credit card. It's just a fake one, but you can use it for a good size. So you can look and say, okay, I want my door you know, to be about this height and I want it to be about that thick. You could cut it in half and then do your windows, you know, half of that. So you can just kind of use it as a tool to kind of help you visualize how big you want to make your doors and windows. Obviously, you don't want to have a door that's this big and then you have a window that's, you know, this big because typically doors are bigger than windows. Not all the time, but sometimes. So, you know, just kind of keep that in mind as you're mapping out your plan. So I'm going to use, the other thing I've also used to kind of help measure are paint swatches. You know, I want my door to be two paint swatches high and you can cut it there and then it just kind of helps you to visualize where you want to put things. All right, so I'm going to use this one and I'm just going to lay it down on there and you can actually just trace around it and you do yours in pencil. I'm doing mine in marker so you can see it a little bit easier. I say that, now my marker's not working. There it goes. 
And in places where the wood is really, really rough, you may have a hard time getting, um, getting it to stick, but it works pretty well. Um, let's see. My thing that I did my windows with, I didn't bring, but I think I will just improvise. So I'm going to cut this in half. And then this can, I can say, okay, do I want to do a window here, here, and here? Do I want to, you know, do some kind of a window that has an unusual shape to it? You could have your door have an arch on the top of it instead of it being a rectangular shape. You know, get real creative when you think about these. And we looked at some Victorian pictures, and I brought a couple. If you guys want to take a peek at these really quick. So just tons and tons of details, lots of arches. You know, you see lots of big windows, but they've got lots of details up above. Here's kind of like that arching, you know, shape here, and it's got these radiating lines that are radiating off. You see lots of parallel lines. So, you know, they're running side by side in tons and tons of details. So kind of keep that in mind as you're deciding what you would like to do. And then I'm going to do... I don't know what I want to do. I think I'm going to do mine here. And, you know, you might want to also think about some of the kids did two stories. So they had, they had it where you could kind of see, like, there might be a balcony. And then up above that, there would be, you know, some other windows. You can also use, you know, circular shapes. You could do, like, a big circular window up at the top. You could use this, and I think I will use this. I like that idea. I'm going to use this to do like a little arch up on the top of mine, on my door. And let's see, I think I need another window. I think I'm going to offset my window and kind of do it down here. All right, now, as you are designing, you don't necessarily have to do every single one of your design ideas in this phase of it. You can kind of do, I like to do like doors and windows, think about that, and then later on you can always come back and you can add more kind of, you know, architectural kind of details. So you would do the front, anything that you want to do on the sides, you're going to go ahead and do that as well. And then of course you would also do what you want on the back. You want a back door, we always have windows in the back of our house too, so you can do some of those as well. All right. Now, I'm going to Magicka TV jump ahead because all of this stuff you guys already know how to do. We've drawn it. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to paint it. And so we're going to kind of jump ahead so I can show you some of the other stuff that I want you to be able to do with these. So here is mine that I've been working on. So I've got things painted. Um, got my door. I added some decorative little trees, little topiaries to the side. I left this open because I'm going to do my house number here. Got windows. I've got some details that are drawn on with my pencil but not painted yet. I did this kind of scalloped, kind of wavy line design that went all around. I have not painted here because you're going to cover this. And then on the back, I've got another window with a little ledge and some a plant. Here are my back doors. So that's where I'm going to kind of jump to here really quick. All right. So, um, back to your details. Use your ruler as best you can and kind of map out your other architectural kind of details that you want. And I've added some on the sides, the front, everywhere. Um, and then as far as what color you want to make it, you could even use markers or paints, however you would like, to... Um, kind of color in that molding or the details that you've got on your building. So I think in honor of our painted ladies that are typically incredibly colorful, I think I'm going to do some orange. So just with my markers, I'm going to come in. And this works really good. Since you've already got that paint that you've put on there, the markers work really nice and they look a lot like a paint. It's a little easier for you, for you to control, you know, and especially if you're one of those people where you paint a lot and you want to try something, you know, a little different, try doing it with the marker. And a lot of times people, 
especially the younger kids, it's a little harder for them to really focus in and get into those itty bitty little crevices and details. So be open to maybe trying something a little different with maybe the markers. So I'm going to fill this in. I wanted to at least get this part done. And once I get this part filled in, these are brush pens and they work really nice. They're kind of give you the effect of a paintbrush. Once I get this filled in, then we're going to talk about the roof and um, how you're going to do the roof. And there are lots of different ways to do the roof. And I just put that in the wrong place. So let's see if it'll come off. It did. All right. Good lesson. Sometimes if you make a mistake, get a little bit of water. All right. So um, on your roof, if you've got the copper, the sheets of copper, or if you've got the sheets of um, the really heavy aluminum foil, then you can actually carve into it to where it creates, you know, like a pattern, like a shingle pattern that you would see up on the roof. If you don't have that, you can take your um, aluminum foil that you get out of the kitchen and you can actually, if you'll get like a thick piece of cardboard or even mat board, and if you will cover the piece of mat board that you're going to use as your roof, if you'll cover it with the, um, the foil, then you can actually carve into that. So you can get the effect just the same, regardless of what supply you use, you can get the same effect. So I'm going to show you my roof here in just a second. And you want lots of details on here, so I'm not quite done with mine, but I'm getting there. All right, so here is my piece of copper. This is what it looked like before. And all I did was I took a ballpoint pen put something cushiony underneath it, so like a stack of papers. And then all you do is you just push down really super hard, use those art muscles, and push down, and you can carve into it and get the design that you want to get. All right? So you could do, I've done, this is kind of like a fish scale looking kind of a pattern. If you wanted to, you know, you could come in and just do the lines that go straight across, and then you could just do little shingle lines, just like little rectangle shapes, however you would like to do it. All right? And so once you've got that done, you're going to need to fold it and bend it into the shape that you need. And so the edges of this, when you first cut it, are just so sharp. They're like a knife. So be really super careful when you're using this. Might be a good idea to get mom or dad to help. And once you got your design in there, you want to kind of figure out where it's going to go so that you know where you need to bend it. And I usually kind of mark it by folding it in half. And that way I know that it's the same on both sides. And then I usually use my ruler and I kind of mash it down really, really good. And then I bend the metal up around it. And then I can tuck this down. And it's going to get real noisy here, but I'm going to take my hammer and I want to bang this down really good. All right. And then it's super simple. You just got your, your really ticky tacky little glue and you just need a little bit, but you want some good coverage. So get it up on the center point up in here. And down here. And then the only other thing that I would suggest is sometimes it wants to keep lifting up. So once you get it on there, just kind of keep every once in a while, kind of mash it back down again. All right. So I'm going to kind of continue working on some of my other pieces. This I'll just kind of keep check on you know, making sure that it's not lifting off because it tends to want to do that just a tad bit. Um, the other things that I wanted to show you really quick, and this may actually pop off, 
is some of the other things that you can do to add some extra details. And one of the things we talked about was your brick pattern. All right. So you made this little piece of foam and you cut it kind of into, it's not a perfect rectangle because I've kind of curved the edges. And then you can actually use that to stamp your brick pattern in. I'm going to take my roof off for a second so I can turn this. So here I've stamped my little brick patterns and I can go in and do that in some other places as well. So all you need to do is just have your, you can do it a couple of different ways. I think it works best if you just take your, um, your stamp pad, kind of figure out what color you want to stamp with and get your brush wet, but you want to make sure it's dry. And then if you'll just kind of lightly put your paint on your little piece of foam, you want enough on there that you can kind of see it. It looks kind of wet, but not super gloppy. And then once you've done that, pick where you want to put it. I'm going to do mine, put that out of the way so you guys can see. I'm going to do mine right here. So I'm just going to kind of position it where I want it. And then if you'll take your fingers and kind of mash it down in the middle and then lift off, it'll give you your little brick shape. And you want to do it where you can see all of the brick sometimes, and then sometimes you want to do it where you only see some of the brick. And you can usually get a couple stamps out of each one. But you can do this to where this is almost solid if you would like to, or you can just kind of randomly do some bricks here and there. The one thing I would tell you that looks really nice is if you'll go back with a black Sharpie marker, and if you'll kind of roughly, it does not have to be perfect, just kind of outline a little bit around your bricks. It looks really nice. I'll show you what that looks like. Kind of like that. All right, these right here. All right, so once you've gotten everything painted, you've gotten everything done up with your marker, one of the last things that I want you to do is I want you to go back with the black marker and I want you to kind of re-outline things because it helps things to pop. All right, and also some other things that you might like to do is start adding in those details that we've talked about. So we talked about these little, you know, brads that I was showing you earlier. You could go in and decide where you might like to do that, maybe doorknobs, different things like that. Let's go to today's art quote. Our art quote today comes from Dan Rice, who was an American entertainer. And he says, there are three forms of visual art. Painting is art that you look at. Sculpture is art that you can walk around. And architecture is something that you walk through. All right, let's get back down to business over here. All right, we've got a few minutes left, and this is when you want to go in and do all of your details. Now, I've already done a lot of my details, but I've still got more details that I will probably even be working on way after the show is way over. But, um, now is when you want to go in and really add some good kind of details. So a couple things that I thought I would mention. Remember I talked to you about that card. And I talked to you about how this is the pretend one. This is not the real thing. But you can take the card and you can actually cut it and you can get the numbers off of it. And you can use the numbers for your address, for the house number of your house. So just cut it into you know, whichever numbers you would like to get. You might, maybe you want to make, make it the numbers of your house address. That would be okay too. Or maybe you want to try to do different ones. I think I'm just going to do, these are already all together, but you'll get the idea. And so you can glue those down there. And also earlier on, we had talked about, this is so cute. And it's such a good idea to recycle a bunch of stuff that you have. We also talked a lot about um, the laminating and this and it's hard to see on camera in person is totally the way to see this but you can take and cut it to where it goes over your windows and I'll give it a little turn there so you can see and it gives it a little sheen like it's a little glass window so it's really super easy to do um, the one thing I will tell you is your glue even though it dries clear it still kind of leaves some little 
I don't know, like some little globbies. You can kind of see them underneath there. So I will say, kind of do your glue down into the corners. So I've done these here, and you're going to be able to see it for right now. You'll see the little dots of glue, but when it dries, it's all clear like this one. And so it also, it looks really good once you get it on there, if you will make sure you wipe off any glue that might have seeped out. You can also take your ruler and you can go around the edges and then you can also do the little line that goes through the middle of the glass, like the window where you can open and close the window. So you might want to do something like that where it's just got the line that goes across or you can also do it where it looks like it's got little panes of glass. And you want to try to make sure that you get it in the center. I'm not thinking I'm in the center here exactly, but you'll get the basic idea. All right, so you could do something like that. Looks really, really nice too. Also, we've used these before quite a bit, and they are the, the 3D paint. So these also work great. Remember how when we were looking at the painted lady pictures, they've got all of these seriously crazy details. So you can go in, I think I'll do black, and you can go in and do all kinds of details with these. And of course, this one's going to be clogged and it's not going to work. So let me go back to the yellow because I think it was working. Or not. There it goes. And you can do some details here. All right, so there's kind of an idea of what that kind of looks like here up at the top. You can also, we talked about these radiating lines, so I've only got half of mine done, but the easiest way to do that is if you will just kind of mark your spots and then take your ruler and line it up to where you can angle across. And you always touch back, this is your vanishing point, this is your middle center point where you always radiate out from that point. All right? And then the last thing I want to tell you super, super, super crazy fast is if you've got some little brads, we talked about doing that, but I've also found some little nails, and you can hammer this inside here, and I actually think I can maybe just push this one. This is what it's called, art muscles, right there. And then you have got a little doorknob, and it's three-dimensional. You can see how it kind of sticks off here. All right, and don't forget the back. You want to make sure that you decorate the back door just as nicely as you decorated the front door. And I think that's about it for today. So we are all wrapped up and ready to roll. Good luck on your three-dimensional recycled houses. Come and check us out next time on The Amazing Art Show.